Chapter 10, Estimating and Hypothesis Testing. In this video, we will learn how to conduct hypothesis testing for independent samples of two population means. Recall in chapter four, we learned what independent events meant. It's where neither event influences the other. Similarly, in this chapter, independent samples occur when we select samples from two or more populations in a way that the values in one sample has no influence on the values in the other sample. So for instance, the exam scores in our statistics class are independent of exam scores in a Spanish class. Logic tells us that these two classes are independent because they have different professors, different students, and different topics being covered on the exam. In business, there will be times when you have to test whether two populations have equal means or if one population mean is larger or smaller than a second population mean. We learned how to conduct hypothesis tests for one population in chapter nine, and the process is very similar for hypothesis testing of two populations. So we will continue to use the three-step decision-making process I showed you in chapter nine and on the worksheets. So here we have two different situations of hypothesis testing. One is when we know the population standard deviation and our samples are independent, and when we don't know the population standard deviations and the sample sizes are also independent. Note that the sigma here is our population standard deviation symbol. So when you're trying to identify the right type of hypothesis testing to do, make sure you know whether or not we know the population standard deviation or we don't. Note that when we don't know the population standard deviation, we also need to identify whether we know if the variances are equal or unequal. When hypothesis testing for two population means, there are two ways we can write the hypotheses, and you'll see both on the homework. So just like in chapter nine, we're working with two-tailed tests, one-tailed lower-tail tests, and one-tailed upper-tail tests. So let's look at the two-tailed test versions. So in this first version, the null hypothesis for our two-tailed test is written in a way that says the difference between our two population means is zero. In other words, it's saying that there's no difference between population mean one and population mean two. In our alternative hypothesis here, it states that there is a difference because when we subtract the two population means, it does not equal zero. It does not matter if the difference is negative or positive because it simply means there is a difference. Whether it's on the left or on the right, we will reject the null if our population means are different from each other after accounting for sampling error. If we look at our second version, and I find the second versions uh, a bit easier to read and understand, our null hypothesis here says that our population mean one is equal to population mean two. And the alternative hypothesis states that our two population means are not equal. Recall that whenever you see equals, not equals, that's our two-tailed test. For our one-tailed test, I find it easier to describe these based on the alternative hypotheses, because we're, what we're testing for within the rejection region. So for our lower tail test, it's saying that the difference between our two population means is less than zero. So when we take population mean one and subtract it by population mean two, if it's less than zero, meaning it's negative, and we're on the left side or lower side of our curve, we would reject the null. Looking at the second version of our same one tailed lower tail hypotheses, it says the same idea population mean one is less than or smaller than population mean two. And if that's the case, our sample data will fall in this rejection region right here on the left. Recall this less than symbol points to the left, so I know it's a lower tail test because we're looking for less than. For our upper tail test, here it says when I take population mean one and subtract it by population mean two, the difference is greater than zero. So the difference between our two population means will be a positive number. 
that means our population mean one is bigger than our population mean two. In our second version, when we look at the alternative hypothesis, it says that population mean one is greater than population mean two. So you can see why I like the second version because it reads more direct. So let's get right into the process. Here is problem 21 from our textbook. Given the following null and alternative hypotheses right here, conduct a hypothesis test using an alpha of 0 0.05. The population standard deviations of population one and population two are assumed to be known. In the alternative hypothesis, is that our population mean one is greater than our population mean two. At least that's what we're testing for. So first we have to make sure we understand our hypothesis. Because it shows us the greater than symbol and it points to the right, and I'm looking for if my population mean one is greater than my population mean two, we know that we're going to be working with an upper tail test. And I always recommend to draw our curve to make sure we are applying our data correctly. So here's my upper tail test. Our alpha is given to us at 0 0.05. And to make sure we know what kind of test this is, do we know the population standard deviation? Looking at our table of data, we can see the sigma symbols here for population standard deviation of our population one and our population two. And we're given some numbers. Therefore, yes, we know the population standard deviation and therefore are going to look for z values for our hypothesis test. So if you're using Appendix F, you'll look at the infinity row at the bottom, or if you're using Excel, make sure to use the norm formulas I've provided in the worksheet. So here, in our decision rule, remember our three-part process, we will reject the null if our calculated test statistic z is greater than our critical value. Recall, to know if it's greater than, you'll look at the alternative hypothesis and whatever that sign is, that's how you know. This is greater than, so our decision rule is also greater than. And it also points to the upper tail. Now to find the critical value, you can either use Appendix F or you can use Excel. So here are the formulas for finding our critical values. Note here on the left, this is when we know the population standard deviation. And on the right is when we don't know the population standard deviation. That's why it's important to know because that way you can use the correct formula. In this problem, since we were working with an upper tailed test, we're going to use this formula right here. So I'll type in equals norm.s.inv parentheses 1 minus and the alpha stated in our story was 0 0.05. We'll close the parentheses and hit enter and that gives us a critical z value of 1.6449, or if we round it, it's 1.645. So we'll plug in our critical value into our decision rule. So if our calculated test statistic that we're going to find in part B is greater than our critical value, we will reject the null. So here's the calculated value of our test statistic formula. And when you take a look at it, you can see it looks familiar to the test statistics that we use in chapter nine for one population. But here you notice that there's twice the number of variables because we're working with two populations. See, I've got two sample means, two population standard deviations, two sample sizes, and two hypothesized population means. Note right here where we see our hypothesized means being subtracted. That's the first version of hypotheses I showed you on the last slide with the zeros. So when we plug in our variables, here I'm plugging in my sample mean, from my population one, we plug in my sample mean of my population two, and then here for our hypothesized values, we put zero because we're hypothesizing that there is no difference between our two population means. So just plug in zero for there. In the denominator, we go ahead and plug in our population standard deviations that are given to us in our table and our sample sizes given to us in our table as well. Now note, be very careful when you plug this information into a calculator that you work with the order of operations correctly. So solving to the right, and again, I want to highlight that our numerator and our denominators are separate. So you can see when I take 144 minus 129 minus the hypothesized value of zero, we get 15. 
And when I work my denominator down here correctly, I get 2.854 for my standard error. When I divide these two numbers, I get a test statistic of 5.26. So just like we learned in chapter nine, this is where critical thinking comes in and we now have to apply, we now have to compare our test statistic to our critical value. So because our test statistic of 5.26 is greater than our critical value of 1.645, and if it's helpful, imagine this cutoff point, that's our critical value 1.645. And if I had to draw where my 5.26 was, it would be somewhere out here in the rejection region because it's greater than our cutoff point. Therefore, we will reject the null. And so when I reject the null, that means we can conclude that the mean for population one exceeds the mean for population two. So it's helpful when we identify our decision, whether we reject or not reject the null, we then restate what our conclusion is. And that's how you do a hypothesis test for two population means when we know the population standard deviations. Now in real world application, just like we ch discussed in chapter nine, we often don't know the population standard deviations. So here we're going to learn how to do hypothesis testing for independent samples when we don't know the population standard deviations. We don't know our sigmas. And you're going to learn how to do this using Excel, which is what you would realistically do at work. So note that you have to make sure to set up the data analysis tool pack in Excel in order to do these statistical tests. The key is to understand conceptually what kind of tests we are running in order to select the right test in Excel. The instructions to run the test I've provided here as well as on the worksheet and in the Excel file that you can use to practice. So when we run the test, you'll obtain an Excel output or table that looks like this. It gives you the mean of both populations, the variance, the number of observations or our sample size. It gives us the pooled variance, which only applies for populations with equal variances. Here's our hypothesized mean difference, which for us will be zero because we hypothesize that there's, there's no difference between our populations. The degrees of freedom, t-stat is our test statistic that we use to compare against the critical value. So rather than having you do hand calculations, you have to be able to read this table and look for our test statistic. Here where it says p, this is the p-value for a one-tailed test, and below it is the t-critical value for our one-tailed test. So whether you're asked to do the p-value approach or critical value approach, you have all the information you need right here. Here is the p-value for our two-tailed test and the corresponding critical t-value for our two-tailed test. Remember that when working with the critical value of a two-tailed test, the critical values are plus or minus because there's two tails. We have two critical values, a negative critical value and a positive critical value with each on either side of our curve. Remember, if we're using the p-value approach, I'm going to take the p-value of my appropriate tail test and compare it to the alpha or the significance level in our problem. If our p-value is smaller than our alpha, we reject the null. If our p-value in the table is greater or equal to alpha, we do not reject the null. Let's do problem 19. We're given the following null and alternative hypothesis tests, where it says that there is no difference in our population mean and our alternative says that there is a difference between our two population means. Recall that equals not equals tells us that this is a two-tailed test. To test the null hypothesis, random samples have been selected from two normally distributed populations with equal variances. The following sample data were observed, so we've got some info down here. Test the null hypothesis using an alpha of 0 0.05. Our alpha is 0 0.05, and again, we want to identify, do we know the population standard deviations? As you can see in the problem, there is no mention of the population standard deviation. We only have sample data. Therefore, we do not know sigma, and we know that we're going to be working with t values. So if you're using Appendix F to find the critical t value, you have to use the degrees of freedom. For two populations, the degrees of freedom is our sample size one, plus sample size 2 minus 2. 
Recall in chapter 9 that our degrees of freedom for a single sample was n minus 1. So in other words, if I think about my degrees of freedom for two populations, it's just doing the n minus 1 twice. So here we're just um, simplifying it in our formula because we have twice the amount of samples. So here I can count, I have uh, in my sample for population one, nine values. My sample in population two, also nine values. So we'll do nine plus nine minus two. That gives us the degrees of freedom of 16. So whether you use the appendix F, that's how you would find your degrees of freedom to read the correct row, or you can just use Excel. So on the homework, similarly, when you're in my stat lab, you'll click on the little box next to your data and open it using Excel. So here we have problem 19. Note that when you do your homework, your numbers will look different, but the process is the same. Uh, here are the instructions on the left side. So you can use this while you're doing your homework. We'll click data and find our data analysis button towards the right. You have to add this in to your Excel. Otherwise you won't be able to find this. So we click on the data analysis button and recall that our analysis tools are in alphabetical order, so I'm going to move down to the end. And in our story, we first need to determine whether our variances are equal or unequal so that we use the correct t-test. In problem 19, our samples have equal variances. So we will choose the two sample assuming equal variances and click OK. Next, we are going to select the data ranges for each variable. So clicking on the button here, we'll select the sample from population one, and you can either hit enter or click on the button to get back into the menu and select our second variable, our sample from population two. Click on that. Double check that the cells here include all of the cells that you want in your problem. Because if you accidentally miss a row or have too many rows, this can affect your data. And note that the problem I'm showing you here is not going to be exactly the same as the problem you have on your homework. So be careful. Now our hypothesized mean difference is going to be zero. And then check the labels button. Note that when I selected my variable ranges, I included the label because that way when the table appears, it has a nice label for my data and I don't have to uh, try to remember which one's which. Now in our story, the alpha was 0.05 and Excel sometimes defaults to 0.05 or whatever your last alpha you typed in. So again, make sure you have the correct alpha stated. And then for my output range, um, you can do a new worksheet or I'm going to just put it on the same page. So I'll click on this button and just put it right there. Click any cell away from my data and then I'll hit OK. And I'm gonna open this up a little bit. So we can see here, there's my test statistic. And because this is a two-tailed test, I'm going to be working with two-tailed data information right here. So let's go back to our write-up. So for our decision rule, we will reject the null if our calculated test statistic t is greater than the critical value of 2.1199 that we saw in the Excel table or less than the critical value of negative 2.1199. Otherwise, we do not reject. So if we plot our critical values onto our figure, you can see here are my cutoff points. So looking at our calculated value of the test statistic in Excel, you're looking for the row that said T stat. You'll read it as negative 4.7725. So now we can compare part B versus part A because our calculated value of the test statistic of negative 0.47725 is less than our critical value of negative 2.1199, we reject the null. Again, you can see visually our test statistic is way over here in the left side of our rejection region. Thus, we can conclude that the mean for population one is not equal to the mean of population two. Because we rejected the null, we're going to explain our conclusion regarding the alternative hypothesis.